Hi, my name is Ariane Malik Madani, and I'm with the Westchester County Department of Health. I'm here today to talk to you about staying healthy this season, particularly how to prevent norovirus. So what is norovirus? It's a nasty group of stomach viruses that cause diarrhea, vomiting, and can even lead to severe dehydration in vulnerable populations, like the elderly or the immunocompromised. It's really not a fun disease to have, so we're gonna to talk to you today about how to protect yourself and keep you and your loved ones healthy this season. Norovirus is a pretty common disease. About one in 15 Americans get sick with noro every year, and 70,000 of those go to the hospital each year. About 600 to 800 people die from norovirus every year, so it can have severe consequences. We're here today to keep you and your workplace from becoming part of these statistics, so listen up to the great tips that we have for you. Before we go into how to prevent norovirus, it's important to understand how noro is transmitted. So the, this virus is spread through person-to-person -person contact. If an infected person doesn't wash their hands after going to the bathroom and then comes into contact with someone else, they can easily pass the virus to the other person. Also, if they touch a surface like a table or a remote, a doorknob, some, an object like that, and someone else comes by and touches that same object, that other person can get sick as well. And this is because noro can survive in the environment for up to two weeks. It's a very resilient virus. It's not easily killed. So it's really important to first just prevent the virus from ever being around the environment in the first place. The five tips that we have for you today are number one, washing your hands. Washing your hands is so, so, so important that we're gonna go more in depth into it later on and we're gonna have a fun demonstration with some volunteers. The second tip we have is to stay home when you're sick. To be honest, a lot of the norovirus outbreaks that we've dealt with in the past have been caused by staff coming back to work while they're still sick or while they're still shedding norovirus particles. Norovirus particles are shed in the stool and the vomit. So if you come back to work while you're still symptomatic, you can spread the virus to other people. And the virus is still shed even when you're feeling better. So up to three days after your symptoms have completely resolved, you can still be passing the virus on to others. That's why we recommend that anyone who's sick with noro stays home from work while they're sick and for three days after they're feeling completely healthy. Tip number three is to wash your fruits and vegetables. Like we mentioned earlier, norovirus can live in the environment for up to two weeks. This makes it really important to rinse all fruits and vegetables before eating. You might think prepackaged salads, fruits with a peel, like a melon, something like that, that doesn't need to be washed. But you really should wash everything that you're going to eat if it's not gonna be cooked. This will help keep yourself healthy and anyone that you're cooking for healthy. Also, because norovirus can live in temperatures up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, you want to make sure to cook all meat and shellfish thoroughly. Our fourth tip for you is to clean and disinfect all contaminated surfaces. When people have norovirus, sometimes they can't make it to the bathroom in time, which means that some lucky person has to clean up spills of vomit and diarrhea. If that person is you, you want to make sure to wear gloves always while cleaning, and if you're cleaning vomit, also protect yourself by wearing a mask. This is because vomit particles can be aerosolized, so usually norovirus is not transmitted through the air. When you're cleaning up any spills of bodily fluids, make sure to use bleach and not any green products. While using green products is great most of the time, when you're dealing with bodily fluids, it's not strong enough, so bleach will kill everything. We recommend using five to 25 tablespoons of bleach per gallon of water and cleaning surfaces with that solution. And it's important to never use a wet vac when cleaning up vomit. Our fifth tip for you is to wash all laundry thoroughly. When washing clothes or linens that are contaminated with bodily fluids, it's important to have those separate from any non-contaminated clothing. So when washing contaminated clothing and linens, use hot water, detergent, the maximum cycle length in a machine, and also machine dry. Additionally, it's really important to wear gloves while doing this as well, so you're protecting yourself. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate how to take off gloves the right way. 
What you're first gonna do is take your left hand and grab part of the right, your right glove like this. And you're gonna pull up, flipping the glove, and having your, this hand, your right hand is now glove free, and your glove is in your left hand. So only your glove has touched the outside of the other glove. Then you're gonna take your right hand and take two fingers, making sure not to touch the outside surface of your left glove. Stick them under here and pull, flipping the glove over and never touching the contaminated glove surface with your glove free hand. Now you can grab the, out, the inside of the glove like this and take it all the way off and voila, you're glove free and germ free. So now we're gonna go back to hand washing, which is the number one way to keep yourself healthy. Hand washing is so important that we're gonna have a really cool demonstration for you. My friend Patrick is gonna do that in the kitchen. Hi, I'm Patrick Quinn with the Westchester County Department of Health, and we're here at the Westchester Community College Culinary Arts Lab, and we're here to test people to see how well they really wash their hands. Most people think they wash their hands the right way. Unfortunately, about 95% of people don't, so we're gonna put them to the test. Hi, we have three volunteers here, and I'd like to thank you for helping us out. And what's your name? Uh, Adam. Elvina. I'm Alexandra. Okay, great. And how well do you guys think you wash your hands? Very well. All right. Well, we're gonna put you to the test. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some fake germs on your hands. You're gonna take a look under a black light to see what your hands look like. And then you're gonna wash your hands, and then you're gonna come back and see how well you did. Sound good? Sounds okay. great. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, we're with the three volunteers, and everybody washed their hands? Yep. Yes. You think you did a good job? Yes. I think so. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to test you and see how well you did, okay? You ready? Yes. All right, let's do it. All right, so put your hands under there, and what do you see? Oh, my goodness. There's germs right in the middle, right in the middle. Yeah, and don't feel bad, because that's an area where a lot of people miss, because a lot of times the hand dents in there, and people just wash their hands without really concentrating on that area. So turn your hands over. And you can see, you did a very good job, but there are some areas around your knuckles where you, where you missed, and, and um, the fingernails and the fingertips are often an area where people miss. So basically, you did a very good job. You can see a little bit down by the back of the thumb, too, there. So next time, just try to wash those areas a little bit better. Sound okay? Sure. All right, great. You did a good job. Thanks a lot. Okay, so the next volunteer is going to put his hands under. And you can see there's quite a few spots that you missed. You, you don't work in a restaurant, do you, Adam? No, I don't. Okay, great. Don't think I should, either. <laughs> Turn your hands over. So you can see the spots. So what you want to do is next time, you want to concentrate on those areas a little bit better because those are areas that you're missing, and those are areas where germs can be left behind where you might spread them to yourself or to other people. Great. All right? Thank you. Great. Let's bring up the next volunteer. So here we're going to see how well Alexandra did. And we're looking at her hands now after she washed them, and I think she did a very good job. We can see a few spots, like around the fingertips. And if you turn your hands over, you can see in between the fingers, low there, there's some, there's some uh, spots there. So those are spots that you want to concentrate on more when you wash your hands, because those are spots where germs can be left behind, and you could spread them if, to yourself or to other people, especially if you put your hands to you anywhere around your face. But you did a very good job, good job. Our volunteers did a great job of washing their hands, but we did see that they missed some spots, particularly around the thumbs, in between the fingers, and around the fingernails, and also the palms of your hands. That's an important one not to forget. So we're gonna go more into depth about the right way to wash your hands so you don't miss those areas anymore. So now we're gonna demonstrate the proper way to wash your hands. The first thing you wanna do is get your paper towels ready, and then turn on the faucet with warm water. Wet your hands apply some soap, and work up a lather. You wanna make sure that you're getting some commonly missed areas. We saw with our volunteers that the palms are often missed, particularly the creases. So you wanna make sure you're rubbing your hands together very thoroughly. Also in between the fingers is important. So just go like this to get that area. You wanna get your fingernails as well. So rubbing your hands like this is a great way to clean that area. And then just get the tops of the hands, around your thumbs, a little bit of your wrists, and do this for 20 seconds. So you can count for, to 20 or sing the happy birthday song twice, whatever you like. And then rinse your hands, making sure you get all the soap off. 
and use the paper towel to turn off the faucet. So like we saw in the kitchen, you want to use water, warm water and soap to wash your hands. We don't recommend using antibacterial soap because that can cause bacterial resistance. Also, we don't recommend using hand sanitizer. Really recommend using soap and warm water to wash your hands. To end on a quick fun fact that's also a little bit terrifying, only 68% of people wash their hands after using a public restroom. So don't be part of that statistic. Use the information that you learned today to stay healthy, wash your hands, and you'll keep everyone around you healthy as well. Thank you so much.